it's Dr. Ken here with you again. AC Physics Exercises. So this is exercises number three for RLC and AC circuits, or what we call resistors, inductors, and capacitors. R for resistor, L for inductor, C for capacitors. So here's our first question. A 3.1, a purely resistive lamp is connected to a 32 volt, 50 hertz AC supply. The lamp draws a current of 2.2 amps. We have to determine A, the circuit resistance, B, the circuit impedance, and C, the power consumed by the circuit. So our first step is to deal with the resistance. So in a purely resistive circuit, it doesn't matter that it's AC, as long as the 32 volts is the RMS value. And in this particular case, they haven't said it was RMS and they haven't said it wasn't. So the default is RMS. So it's 32 volts RMS, so we can deal with the whole problem from an Ohm's law perspective. So we all know that resistance equals the voltage divided by the current. So that's what we've got here. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. So our voltage of 32 volts divided by our current of 2.2 means that we have 14.54 ohms of resistance in the lamp. And you could even put in brackets hot because that's the resistance when the lamp is running So the lamp resistance is also, R is equal to Z, is also 14.54 ohms. So what we're saying here is the resistance and the impedance are the same. So in a purely resistive circuit, R and Z are the same thing. So 14.54 ohms. Finally, the power. The power equation I decided to use was that we uh, we know the current and we know the resistance. So I decided to go with power equals I squared R, since that's the data that I had, and 2.2 squared multiplied by 14.54 gives us a 70.37 watts. So don't forget the magnitude is very, very important, the 70. 37 and W for watts, um, right ohms for resistance. You can even just use a capital R, or you might want to use the omega symbol. So either way, all those three options for ohms are reasonable. But don't forget to put the units in. Without the units, it's only half an answer. Our next one is 3.2. A 2.7 kilo ohm resistor or 2.7 thousand ohm resistor is connected to a variable frequency resource. If the frequency is 2 kilohertz, that's 2000 hertz, and the circuit current is 4 milliamps, determine the voltage of the supply. So we want to determine the voltage of the supply. So the first thing we can do is we know it's a resistor, so it's a purely resistive circuit. So we know that voltage equals R times I. So it's straight Ohm's law. Next, we know that Z and R are the same thing. So volt equals Z times I. So we're going to have our 2.7 K ohms multiplied by 4 milliamps. So that's 2.7 times 10 to the 3 multiplied by 4 times 10 to the minus 3. So when we do the maths, we come out at 10.8 volts. So our 2.7 multiplied by 10 to the 3 multiplied by 4 times 10 to the minus 3 gives us 10.8. 8 volts. Question 3.3. A heater draws a current of 10 amps and has a resistance of 22 ohms. Again, it's a heater. 
A heater does not have capacitance or inductance, it's purely resistive, so we can stick to Ohm's law approach. So we want to know what the applied voltage is, the circuit impedance, and the power supplied by the heater. So the applied voltage, again, straight Ohm's law, volts equals R times I, or volts equals Z times I. So we've got our 10 amps multiplied by our 22 ohms, giving us 220 volts. The circuit impedance, remember, it's a purely resistive circuit, so Z and R are the same. So Z equals R, which equals 22 ohms. And finally, again, using I squared R to determine the power, we take 10 squared for the amps, multiplied by 22, equals 2.2 kW, kilowatts, so it's 2.2 thousand watts. Question 3.4. An ideal inductor draws a current of 12 amps when connected to 220 volts, 60 hertz. Determine the current if the same circuit is connected to 120 volts at 100 hertz. So there's some basic things we're going to need to work out first. So the first thing is we're going to need to work out the inductive reactance. So the way we can do that, they've given us the overall circuit information. So we can say that XL is going to be equal to Z because it's the only thing in the circuit. So V divided by I is going to give us the XL and or the Z, which is 220 divided by 12 divided by, sorry, divided by 12 gives us an answer of 18 0.33 ohms. Now that's at 60 hertz, right? It only works at 60 hertz because we've used that information around 60 hertz. But they now want to change it and tell us what if we put that same inductor into something at 120 volts at 100 hertz. So we've actually, instead of working out the reactants, we've actually got to work out how many Henrys the inductor is. So that's going to take a little bit of effort. So I'll just turn my pointer on. And we know that XL equals 2 pi FL. So that's the basic formula there for XL. I've simply transposed the equation to make L the subject, because this is the bit that we want. We actually want this bit. So I've transposed the formula, make L the subject to the formula. So L is simply equal to XL divided by two times pi times F. And if I do all the mathematics for that and insert it in, I end up with a answer of my inductor, that's this gadget up here, and remember they said it was an ideal inductor so we don't have to worry about any internal resistance, then it's 48.62 millihenries. Now that we have the inductance, we can now move on to the next step and try and answer the 120 volts. So we can find out, next step, is to find out what the XL is at 100 hertz. So again, XL 2 pi FL, same formula, but this time we're going to put in the 100 hertz and we're going to insert the millihenries from the previous equation and we're going to work out what the new reactance is at 100 hertz, and that means it's this one here. It's 3.55 ohms, and we should put in brackets here at 100 hertz. So at 100 hertz, 
it's 30.55. Remember up here at 60 hertz it was 18.3. So as the frequency goes up so does the capacitive reactants. Sorry, the inductive reactants. And then finally we can just use a little bit of Ohm's law. So our current equals our voltage divided by XL and of course we had a new voltage didn't we? So here's our 120 from here. We've simply put 120 in here. We've taken the 30 ohms and we've put it in here and we've done the calc and the answer is 3.93 amps. So it draws a lot less current because the frequency has gone up but the voltage has come down. So compared to our original arrangement voltage went down, frequency went up so that had a substantial effect on the current. Three point five. Calculate the capacitance of a motor start capacitor if its capacitive reactance is one hundred and ten ohms at fifty hertz. So we'll state that again. Three point five is calculate the capacitance of a motor start capacitor if its capacitive reactance is one hundred and ten ohms at fifty hertz. So the first thing we have to know and realize that the formula for capacitive reactance XC is 1 on 2 pi FC. So the next thing we do is we can substitute some values into our formula. Again I'll just turn my pen on and 110 ohms is coming from there and the 50 Hertz is coming from here. Pi is a constant, 1 is a constant, 2 is a constant, so we just have to move the formula around to find C, which is the bit that we're after, what is the capacitance. So move the formula around, C is equal to 1 on 2 pi 50 times 110, and we just do the maths and we end up with a capacitor or a capacitance of 28.94 microfarads or 28.9 times 10 to the minus 6 for micros. So quite a small capacitor, 28.94 microfarads. 3.6 now. Determine the current taken by a 110 microfarad capacitor when it is connected to a 240 volt 60 hertz supply for the purpose of power factor correction. So 3.6 determine the current taken by a 110 microfarad capacitor when it's connected to a 240 volt 60 hertz supply. So the first thing we need to find out is the capacitive reactance. So the formula for capacitive reactance is 1 on 2 pi Fc, which is the formula we have on the screen here. The next thing we need to do is we need to substitute in some values, which we've done here. So here's our 60 hertz. Going in here, there's our 60 hertz and our 110 microfarads. That's that one there. So we've simply just done 1 on 2 pi, frequency of 50, capacitor of 110 microfarads equals an XC of 24.11 ohms. So now we're just down to simple Ohm's law. We have the voltage. And all we need to do is say the current through the capacitor is the voltage across the capacitor divided by the XC. 
or the capacitive reactants. So we end up with 240 volts divided by 24.11 equals 9.95 amps. So that's the amount of current we we're asked to determine. The current taken by a 110 microfarad capacitor. So two steps we had to uh, find out the XC for the capacitor. And then once having done that, we could then determine the current through the capacitor for a 240 volt 60 hertz supply. So that's the end of all the exercises for section 3, doing um, calculations around resistive circuits, AC circuits, inductive AC circuits, and of course the last one, capacitive AC circuits.